Shama Godi and Mitya Kishori, Pritana Jodi. Rasika Rasila Kela Chabila Guna Kade Bila Sri Krishna It's hard to talk about something that is beyond the material realm to use words to explain. And that is why Kirtan is unique, because you are using words, you're using mantras or names to express something that is really uh, ineffable, it is unfathomable. And so, somehow in song we can praise what is beyond the perception of uh, material senses. <laughs> and the goal of that path are the same. It's like the act of eating ice cream is itself sweet. Right, so the act of eating it is like a practice, but what you're experiencing is immediate sweetness. So that is what bhakti yoga is about. It's about dispelling the delusion and so much of yoga is about you do this to attain that and uh, that's kind of dualistic so bhakti yoga is truly non-dual as Maharaji said sub ek everything is one but in the process of everything being one it doesn't mean that everything goes away it means the diversity and the beautiful expansion of Narayan himself remains but within that is a uh, single um, there's a single essence that permeates everything. And that essence, to taste that essence that exists everywhere and is also within every heart, is what the bhakti yoga experience is about. So everyone who will understand it will love it because bhakti promotes in you the thing that is most important, which is the joy of your own soul. And so people go out and they try to find that joy by focusing on things in the world, whether they be objects or individuals. And um, in many cases, the contacts that they have in this world, when they don't understand that everything is a reflection of the single Narayan they fall short from the mark because they're unsatisfied with those relationships. Bhakti Yoga teaches that those relationships are fine, that we feel and love things in the world because we're actually loving the spirit of the soul. So who wouldn't embrace something as beautiful as that? And although it is incredibly sort of straightforward and simple, it remains a supreme secret because one has to know the sweetness of the heart. And uh, that's what I think us guys are trying to do by chanting and spreading the names of God um, in a way that, and we try not to be fanatical. We're not sectarian, although we, each of us has a unique belief and that belief is important, and in most cases it should be kept private. But the sharing of the sacred name can be held in auditoriums like this one with 500 people, 
And everyone who is chanting the name could have a slightly different take on what that name means and what the relationship that they have to that name. And that's actually allowed. Means allowed meaning that that is what makes it beautiful because then everyone pours in their unique relationship. And in the process of chanting, there is a purification process as people go deeper into the nature of their own atma, their own selves. And um, the song continues and spirals on its own amazing uh, way that you cannot always determine or you can't contain it. Offering at the lotus feet of Gopi. 